What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a video about Soulstone Survivors. If my regular viewers remember, this is a game I covered a little bit back in October during the Steam Next Fest, as it was one of the demos available that I thought was pretty cool. And as such, a PR company working for the developer reached out and asked if I wanted to take a look at their early access build, which is launching today. And thus, here we are. So the easiest way to describe Soulstone Survivors would be a more 3 d vampire survivors. Obviously the name is similar, the gameplay is similar, but I do think Soulstone manages to be sufficiently unique that it's worth playing on its own. Though that said, the core gameplay ideas are largely the same. You start out with a few heroes, you play through these sort of arena matches where you're fighting waves of enemies on a timer, unlocking more heroes by doing various things and then using those. So the core idea is largely the same. Now before we start diving into specifics though, I did want to mention that everything you see here is not what is going to be available. As I said, this is launching into early access. Right now there's about five maps available. The final number is supposed to be like 10. They haven't implemented the rune system yet, which seems to be modifiers of some sort, so on and so forth. Not everything is here, but enough to get an idea. So before we actually dive into the combat part of it, let's talk about the menu that you're going to be seeing. Obviously, we select characters we have available. Once you have unlocked a character, you still have to actually do something in game to purchase them, if you will, which is spending one of the resources you get from playing the game. Typically speaking, from the big bosses, they'll drop a specific currency and then you use that currency on these unlocks. However, while the heroes themselves do have a unique style, they also have an alternate weapon choice, which kind of changes up their default attack a little bit. And once you reach a certain prestige with a character, that is to say you've used them a few times, you can unlock their blacksmith upgrade, which will just, again, provide them an alternate weapon that gives them a different default attack changing up their playstyle, which I thought was pretty cool. And then we have skills. Skills are sort of base upgrades to all of the heroes across the board, thus giving you some amount of progression even if you're not doing particularly great with a new hero. As you play the game and defeat enemies, that kind of thing, you'll gather up various currencies which you can then spend on the skill upgrades. Again, typically either currencies from the bosses themselves or the currency you get from killing regular monsters. And these are the upgrades you would expect. Pickup radius, health, movement speed, that kind of thing. And currently we don't have any information really on the runes, just that there will be here and I assume change the gameplay in some way. But then we have the maps. When we're ready to go, we of course pick our character, then pick a map we want to play on. Each of them has different environments and different monsters that spawn in. Moreover, each map drops a particular type of resource. So if you're looking for something in particular, it's important to note which map you're actually playing on. And after you fully complete a map for the first time, you'll unlock harder versions of it where you can activate the curses, which will provide difficulty modifiers to keep the game interesting in the face of your ever-increasing power. Now, once we're actually in combat, even here there are a few key differences from something like Vampire Survivors. Whereas Vampire Survivors counts up and waves increase specifically on a timer, this particular game is actually about how many enemies you kill rather than the time specific. In fact, where a match of vampire survivors typically lasts about 30 minutes, here it's much more variable than that. My longest was about 20-ish, and my quickest, once you start getting more power under your belt, was a little over 10 minutes. Basically how many enemies you can kill as quickly as possible to trigger the next boss. Now obviously there's all sorts of things that are going to affect this, but the general idea is that you kill enemies, pick up the soul stones they drop, which are your experience. The more of these you pick up, the faster you level, and the more ability choices you get. Skills are divided up into passive and active. You can only have enough active skills to fill your skill bar. However, afterwards, you can start leveling them up with various powers, and passive skills just do something across the board, like applying debuffs to enemies. The active skills, though, are where things get a little interesting, as each level up upgrade is not necessarily the same. They have quality levels to them, meaning that when you level up, you have a potential chance at getting, say, a normal and uncommon common, an epic, or a legendary version of the upgrade, which will provide ever-increasing amounts of stats to the upgrade itself. So you're going to be leveling up these skills quite a bit, and those upgrades aren't even necessarily set in stone. They can be things like just flat damage, area modifiers, a little bit of both, and if that wasn't enough, occasionally you'll find powers that actually apply to multiple types of a active skill, meaning that you'll find an upgrade that actually levels up multiple of your skills all at the same time. Those are a little rare, but once you find them, they're 
are very fun and usually always the best pick. Now, if you draw a hand that you don't need, you can choose to pick passive buffs instead. This kind of eliminates the useless level concern. Once you're full up on active skills, if you don't want any of them that the game drew for you, you can choose instead to roll passive skills, which just give flat increases to things across the board to kind of eliminate the dead level problem. Beyond that, the game's pretty fast paced. As you can see in the background here, it does get pretty hectic, as you might imagine. You can turn down some of the visual clutter and the options, by the way. Probably worth mentioning is there's a lot of explosion type stuff that can make it difficult to see what's going on, and you can absolutely adjust some of that in the options. But that, guys, is pretty much what Soulstone Survivors has to offer while adding in variations thereof. Overall, though, it's a lot of fun. It's a game I've been playing for like 20, 30 minutes here and there. So before I leave you, I want to drop a few opinions on this thing since this is a checkout video. I have two strong opinions about this. I would like to see two things from this game. One, that it does not add any sort of monetization outside of just being a buy to play game because currently that's the plan. However, anytime I see things like multiple currencies and unlocks, I immediately jump to they might try to add some sort of predatory monetization in here. And as long as they avoid that, I think they'll have a great case to be made for their game. The second, as I mentioned, this is going to be a buy to play game and currently I don't have any information on the pricing and given that this is supposed to be going up the day that the launch happens, chances are you already might know it. That said though, I think the 10 to $15 range is the right mark, if you will. 15 is probably pushing it. I would prefer to see this around 10 bucks. And if you can get it for around that price, then I think you'll have a good time and a game you can play intermittently, say on the Steam Deck when you're waiting around. But that's pretty much all I've got for you guys here. It's a fun title, and I'm curious to see how well it goes for them. But let me know what you think about the title down below. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.